Psalm. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. I want to look here at number, verse number one, start reading that this morning. We do welcome everybody here this morning. If you're visiting for the first time, I might be sure, I don't know. Uh, but we're glad that you're here, and please don't take our lack of, of uh, approaching you being uh, personal. Maybe we, don't, maybe we don't know about it, so uh, we're glad that you're here today. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That's why I want you to remember that word trouble this morning. Therefore, will not we fear Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. You see that little word Selah in your Bible a lot of times in them Psalms, and that simply means just stop and think, meditate on what you just read. That's something to think about. I want to preach this morning. On the subject, how to trust God when your heart is broken. How to trust God when your heart is broken. I'm preaching this morning to somebody, I don't know who. That maybe you're here this morning and inside you're really, really sitting there with a broken heart. Maybe you act right. Maybe you smile and speak and other people do, but nobody knows the hurt that you're experiencing and what you're going through. That's who I'm preaching to this morning. One of the most illogical, ridiculous, false, ungodly beliefs and doctrines going around today is, is this, 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 not, this uh, notion of if you're saved and right with God, Nothing bad is ever going to happen to you. You're never going to be sick. You're never going to have a battle. You're never going to get your heart. That's, that's a doctrine of the devil. Some of the best, greatest saints in the Bible and throughout history have suffered a lot and trouble, had a lot of trouble. Uh, all of us know, see Job laying on the ground seven days and seven nights. Lost nearly everything that he had. Kids, uh, stocks and bonds, cattle and means of making a living. Lost nearly it all just in a few short days. Many of us see uh, David weeping there at a casket of his own son who who'd, uh, who'd, uh, who'd had, had died there in, in the book of First and Second Samuel in those stories. We hear the stories of people like Corey Ten Boom who was in a uh, communist concentration camp when the, uh, for hiding Jews there from, in Holland. There in the, in the, during those days, all that crazy stuff that went on. We hear about people who suffered that do right. And, and it helps us. We hear about Daniel, who did the right thing and wound up in a lion's den. Uh, we hear about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who did right. And still wound up getting thrown in fire. Now sometimes you think, if I'm saved, why in the world is all this happening to me? And you can go through some stuff where you think, what in the world? Where, where's God? What? And don't and and the TV preachers will mess your mind up and make you think, if I was really saved, this wouldn't be happening. And that's not right. That's not right, y'all. And listen, if they live for God long enough, their day's coming too. And it always does. Man is born under trouble as the sparks fly upward. That's how sure you're going to have trouble in this world. I know you don't want to hear that, but might as well just face it. Uh, you know, the, when you go to the doctor, he don't always tell you what you want to hear, but he tell you what you need to hear. And that's what I'm doing this morning, tell you what you need to hear. And so we'll talk about that this morning. God's people have always suffered unbelievably uh, in, uh, throughout Throughout history, uh, there'll come a time when, when your education, your money, your knowledge, your talent, your ability will not be able to help you. I heard that old story one time. Said this old fella, 
down in, uh, in Mississippi years ago when they would take boats. I had, the only way to get across the Mississippi River was a ferry boat. And people go down there to pay so much and had these guys that operated these ferry boats. And one day a real nice dressed gentleman, all dressed up, real educated, went down there and he got on that and he paid the money and got on that boat. And on the way over, he's on one on there. He was talking to the old, uneducated southerner uh, that was uh, taking that boat. He thought he'd bring up conversation. He said, uh, now, I've been studying science in college, and, and we've been studying the, uh, the, uh, all kinds of math problems, trigonometry and ge uh, geometry and algebra, too, and stuff. And he said, do you know that? And the guy said, Lord, no, boss. I said, I don't know nothing about no math. I don't know nothing about no trick, nothing like that. He just kept going with that ferry boat. In a few minutes, the, the, old, the old rich man said, uh, well, uh, what about history? Would you like to discuss history of, uh, of our country and the, and the old country we're in Europe and all of that? And he said, oh, no, boss. I don't know nothing about no, no history. I never went to school, never had no education. I don't have no He said, I just went like that. A little bit further later, a little bit later, he uh, he, he said, well, what would you like to discuss politics? Uh, and uh, uh, he said, oh, no, boss, I don't know nothing about no politics. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't know. And he started, kept going to that boat. A little while longer, he said, well, what, uh, would you like to discuss uh, uh, anything, any topic, any subject and all that? And uh, he, he said, no, nope, don't know nothing about it. Never been to no school. Never been, uh, got no education. And finally, that old, that old, that rich man looked at him and said, man, you done missed half your life. You don't know nothing about religion. You don't know nothing about politics. You don't know nothing about math. You don't know nothing about history. You done missed half your life. Man, and he would say, you done missed half your life. And a little bit later, he got there and, and, the, and the man, the, the old slave guy looked at him and said, boss, can you swim? He said, no, I never took time to learn. He said, well, you done lost all your life because <laughs> this boat's in a leak and we're going to the bottom. <laughs> and you know what? All his education, all his knowledge, all his money, did not do him one bit of good. Not one bit of good. I'm going to tell you something. There'll come a time in your life, friend. There'll come a time in your life when every bit of money in the world cannot do what you need done. Every, every, every bit of your knowledge, every bit of your talent, every bit of your wit, all of your conniving will not be able to get you out of the mess that you get in. And trouble comes. I've had... Uh, God's been mighty good to me in my life. I've had some trouble. I have. I know what it's like to hurt. I know what it's like to have your heart broke. I know what it's like to lay in the bed at night and dread another night. I've been there. I, have you ever given that? Where you just dread, oh, Lord, we don't have to do this again. Because you know you're going to toss and turn and toss and turn and wake up and look at the ceiling. And I've got a glass in front of my head. And just laid there. God, what am I going to do? God, how am I going to make it? No, God, are you with me, Lord? Are you going to help me? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there where you think, I don't see no way out? I don't see a, a path, like they say. I don't, I don't see a way out of this mess. That, you're who I'm talking to this morning. And if you're not there, you will be there. So get this good. I want to just give you three things this morning that I think would remind you that would help you when it comes your turn to suffer and hurt. Number one, always remember this. Number one, God has not forgotten you. Amen? God has not forgotten you. He said in the book of Hebrews, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You say, Brother Danny, I've lost everything I've got. I talked to a lady one day on visitation in, in, in his uh, it wasn't an apartment like them, uh, assisted living, one of them places like that. She came, she came to the door. She sat down. I said, ma'am, you all right? She said, no. She said, all I do is sit in here and cry. I said, what's wrong? She said, my husband left me not long ago. But he found another woman, preacher. So he took off to Florida with her. And she said, and I'm, you, could, you could tell visibly that woman was in agony. She was hurting. That's pain. That's pain. That's some of the absolute worst pain that you can feel because it ain't just hurt. It, it's feelings of betrayal. It's feelings of trust. It's feelings of uh, you, you feel like a failure yourself. It, it's tough, buddy. It's tough. And, uh, and, and she said, uh, I just don't, 
I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I was glad. I was glad to sit down with that lady and take my Bible and say, listen, sister, God hadn't forgot you. God hadn't forgot you. Listen, if you don't hear nothing else I say this morning, you hear me and hear me well. God hadn't forgot you either. He's still willing and able to help you. He's still willing and able to help you. I wish I could tell, talk real personal and tell y'all a lot of personal things. Uh, but just take it from me. God has not forgotten you. I remember I used to lay in bed at night and I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. And I'd toss and turn and toss and turn. And I remember turning the radio on. My radio was upside the bed and I'd turn it on. Back when they had that, Gaffney was an FM station, 105.3. Down here in Gaffney, South Carolina. And the McCamey, Peg McCamey, who just went to home be the Lord just a few days ago, had come out with that song, God on the Mount. And I remember I turned that song, and, and Peg would come on there. She had an old raspy sort of Tennessee mountain woman voice, and I loved it. And she said, life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace like you've never known. And boy, she'd start get into it, get into it. Get into it, get into it, and and finally she say, "But the God of the mountain, He's still God in the back. and it kick in about right there. And she say, "He's still God." Hey man, hey man, can you do that for me, sister, right now? I, I'm just, I'm just. There you go, right there. That's it. Uh, and and you know what? I remember thinking, and you know, I was hurting like crazy, but deep down inside, that gave me a little spark of hope. I'll never forget that. It's like you have, like a pilot light. You know, you click the pilot light and a little spark comes out. I, my fire was about out, but I had, to, I had a little bitty spark there. And I remember many, many times going down the road, and I thought, what am I going to do? And I'd go through the hall and see pictures on the wall and start crying. And, and I'd, I thought, I've been on the phone. So I've been on the phone. I can't hold up phone so tight. I about get cramps in my arm. And I remember I, I'd call my pastor. And I, I said, Preacher, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I remember thinking that. And you know, little by little by little by little, I realized God has not forgotten you. You listen to me. You listen to me this morning. The darker the trial, you listen, the darker the trial you're going through, the greater the miracle of deliverance that God's going to perform in your life. Amen. Amen. That's right, brother. He, he, God is not on the other side of the storm waiting, hoping you'll make it through. God is in your storm with you. Take it out. You remember what he told Noah? You know what he told Noah? When it got time for Noah to get in the boat, God said, Noah, come thou into the ark. You know what that means? He was in there, he was in there waiting on Noah. God wasn't out here saying, all right, Noah, things is a fixing to get bad. You get in that ark, boy, you're going to drown. The Lord said, Noah, Come thou in our stuff like that what makes me believe the Bible more. Uh, uh, who would have thought to say that? God was in there saying, Come on in, Noah. Come on in. I'm going to be in here with you. Listen, be, being a Christian don't make you exempt from going through trouble. It does promise you God will be with you in your trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't, amen. Listen, the children of Israel at the Red Sea, God didn't say, Well, there it is. Do the best you can. Swim across. Now, be wait. He was right there and parted the Red Sea. God may not prevent you from going through trouble, but He will promise that He'll be there with you through your trouble. Amen. Get it. Daniel in the lion's den. God did not deliver Daniel from going to the lion's den, but He was with Daniel in the lion's den. The angel of the Lord come and shut his mouth. They're with him. Lord, I'd rather be in the fire with Jesus than out of the fire without him. Amen. Thank God this morning, people. He's in, he has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. He, you hear me this morning? Luke chapter 12 and verse 6. Said every sparrow that falls to the ground. Uh, uh, one farthing, uh, a little bit of piece of money, a penny. Listen, if God sees every sparrow that hits the ground and God knows the hairs on your head, God knows how much your light bill is. And he knows how much your uh, your your uh, body can take. And he knows what your house payment is this month. And he knows the trouble that you're facing. Hey, hey, listen to me this morning. God has not forgotten you. Amen. Number two. The second thing I'll give you this morning is, good news, Romans 8, 28 is still in the book. Romans 8, 28 is still in the book. 
Now what does Romans 8, 28 say? For we know that all things, that's a big word right there. Boy, what if he just said, a lot of this stuff y'all going through, it's going to work out for good. He didn't say that. All things. Get them all while we're at it. Well, you don't know what I'm going through. That's, that's included in all. All things work together for good to them that love God. Man, I'm glad Romans 8, 28 is in the book. Because there's been some times when I said, how in the world could any good come out of this mess? You ever been there? You think, Lord, I know what you said, but I think, I think you meant everybody but me. No, he didn't. He didn't mean everybody but you. He meant you too. He meant you too. We know. We know. We know that all things. Now, when you're being hurt and when you're hurting inside, it's hard to see something good coming out of it. When you're going through a divorce or you're going through a surgery or you're facing cancer treatments or you're maybe pay a heart surgery and you might not live, it's hard to sit there and say, well, I know everything's something good going to come out. That's hard to do. But deep down, you've got to remember, he didn't say everything that happened to you is good. He said everything that happened to you works together for good. You may not see it for a long time on down the road. Did you know, a, you know what a diamond is? A diamond is a lump of coal that has been under a lot of pressure. A diamond is a lump of coal that's been under a lot of pressure. You know what God's wanting to do with you? He's wanting to make you a diamond, brother. One man told me one time, uh, I've been through a lot, a lot of trouble, and he said, boy, Danny, the Lord must trust you. I said, I don't know if he, I don't think he does. And he said, he must. He said, I, I'd kill somebody if I went through what you went through. And I said, well, maybe he does. I don't know. But I know one thing. You, you, you are what you are today in being able to help people because of the trouble that you've been through and God made you a better person out of it. That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, listen, nobody likes it. I mean, uh, the trouble it endured, the diamond endured, made it valuable. Made it valuable. When you have big trouble, we have a bigger God. Amen? That's right, brother. Uh, trouble is to develop you. Trouble is resistance. That's what trouble is. You try and live for God, you get trouble, that's resistance. Do you know what resistance does? Without resistance in the air, birds couldn't fly. Without resistance in the water, a massive ship couldn't sail. Without gravity resisting us, we couldn't walk. If gravity suddenly let go, everything just float up in outer space or something, I guess. Uh, but that's resistant, and it helps us. You know something? Trouble is the womb of greatness. Trouble is the womb of greatness. If you're going through trouble, and God's making you and molding you and working in your life, all he's doing is getting you ready to do something big with. I heard him old preacher used to say, he said, God, if God's ever going to use a man like a preacher, he breaks him first. I thought, oh, don't talk like that. Maybe, maybe I'll slide through. Maybe I'll be smart enough so he won't have to. No, I wasn't. He broke me. He broke me. He allowed me to be broken. And you know what? When after you've been broke, your heart goes out to other people's broke. Which it couldn't otherwise. Never forget, one night, we was all, we was all, uh, I took a bunch of kids somewhere, we was up north somewhere, a whole bus full of kids, teenagers. And I mean, there was about 60 or 70 of us, and we got up in the middle of, we got up in the middle of Maryland somewhere, and the bus broke down, 11, 12 o'clock at night, and you ain't going to find no parts, no big diesel bus at 11, 12 o'clock at night. We was sitting at a convenience store. We sat there all night long. All night. Couldn't do nothing. People running in and out the door, going to the store, getting candy, going in. And so like, Shut up! She stepped on me! Ow! Going, I mean, it was awful. Packed in there like sardines. And I remember, you know, I, you know, you hate to say them. It ain't their fault. So I let them play. And they was running around there and fighting, watering in the floor and everything else. And I finally hit 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Two or three o'clock in the morning, I started getting sleepy. I remember I got over in that bus. You couldn't move. It's that people sitting there were. And I laid my head over against the window like that. 
And I looked up and it was pitch dark outside. And I lay down and I tried to sleep. I'm not, I'm not good at sleeping with people hollering and screaming and my head laying against the window. I envy you if you can do that. I envy people who just lay down and go sleep anyway. Of course, you better hope your house don't ever catch on fire. But, but uh, I, I lay my head down like that. Lay my head down like that. Lay down. <laughs> and about 5 o'clock in the morning, I didn't know what time it was. I woke up and said, see, it's getting light. I thought, glory to God. Woo! We've made it. It's daylight. I started getting happy. About that time, it, that daylight pool, it was a truck. And it was a white truck sitting right beside us. And that daylight just pulled out and it got pitched out. I, <laughs> I was hallucinating. Do you know something? That's the same way we do in life. We're going through trouble. We're going through hard times. We're going through something awful. And we get a little bit of hope and say, Go to God. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. And it's the oncoming train. You know, help me with this saying. When it rains, it... See? So, sometimes when you have trouble, here comes something else. And then here comes something else. And then your car tires up. And then your wife goes crazy. And then your kids rebel. And then you lose your job. And then you get the coronavirus. And then you think, good night. Every time I see just a little tiny bit of help, everything gets black again. Let me tell you something, brother. Yeah, that means that God hadn't forgot you. God's up there in control. He, he's calling the shots. I mean, brother, he's got, I heard about that fellow man had that plane uh, a long time ago. And the guy had him on radar. And a, a, a normal person like us went in there and seen, and the, the, he was down at the control tower at the airport. And he said, now that right there is some altitude. That right there is some altitude. That right there is some altitude. And he said, here's a big old storm. That's so many thousand feet or whatever. And he said he had some in place flying up there above the storm. He had some in place flying up below the storm. And he had some in place flying right through the storm. And that preacher seen that. And he said, I like to shout in my head off. He said, you know what? God ain't got the radar. He's got some of us above the storm. He's got some of us below the storm. And he's got some of us in the storm. But the truth is, he's got it all under control. God ain't made no mistakes. God ain't never forgot you. God ain't never lost one yet. I mean, you belong to him. He'll see you through. I've got good news for you this morning. There's, there's, there's a better day ahead, brother. I'm telling you, there's a better day ahead. You, you hear me? You hear me this morning? It, it, things, things are going to get better if you just hang in there. I heard about these ladies, I think it's down in South America somewhere, and, these, this, uh, and uh, the men, the crew, had gone out to sea and got lost. And they couldn't find their way back out in the ocean, went around, and now nowhere, no. And the women and the kids were back on the island, and they was crying and they was praying, and they was crying and they was praying, and they said, Oh God, please, oh God, please. And this one woman, her husband was out there on that ship. And she had a little baby. And she kept saying, I'll never see him again. I'll never see my husband again. He's gone. And lo and behold, about that time, somebody spilt some caught the house on fire and burned their cabin to the ground. So she's standing out here with the babies like this. Her husband's lost at sea. And now her house burned down. And when you get like that, you think, God, do you even care? I mean, Lord, is this the way? You, you get like that sometimes. Is this the way I'm going to get treated? Trying to live right, pay my tithes, and go to church and be faithful, and this is what happens? Now, that ain't right, but that's how you think sometimes. And you start thinking, my goodness, Lord, I'm, I, thought, I thought you'd have me. She cried, she cried, she cried, she cried. And early in the morning, somebody hollered and said, Hey! Hey, there's the ship. And the ship came in. And the husband started getting off of the ship and their wives and their family. And they was all out there crying and hugging necks and crying and hugging necks. And she saw her husband and she said, oh, darling, I thought I'd never see you again. And she hugged him and he hugged her. She said, I thought I'd never see you again. We thought you was dead. We thought. He said, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm safe. I'm safe. She said, but I have bad news. Our house burned down. She said, we lost everything we got. He hugged her and said, don't you worry, honey, that ain't bad news. That ain't bad news. 
He said, we saw the light of that fire way out there in the middle of the ocean. And he said, that light of that fire guided us in here. And he said, if it hadn't been for that fire, we'd have never got home. I'm telling you tonight, oh, this morning, glory to God, people. Hallelujah. What you think is a bad thing is probably God doing a good thing, and you just don't see it yet. Hadn't been for that fire, she'd have never saw her husband again. You can build another house. But she got her husband back. She got her, her kids back. Everything worked out good. You know, Romans 8, 28 is still in the book. He said, all things work together for good to them that love God. If you love God this morning, it's going to work out, I promise you. Count on it. Count on it. It's going to work out. Amen. Hallelujah. Then I'll say number three. The third thing I want you to remember. First thing, God ain't forgot you. Second thing, Romans 8, 28 is still in the book. Number three, this too will pass. Right, what said in verse 8 and 11, Selah, brother, this thing going to be over. No matter how long the night, the day finally comes. No matter how dark the, the hour, it finally gets light again. Amen. Hudson Taylor laying on his deathbed one day said, I'm so weak, I cannot work. I cannot pray. I cannot even read the Bible. I can only sit still and trust. That's what he did. I remember hearing a preacher say one time to pastor a large church. And he said, during that time, there was two ladies in the church that had lost a child, a baby, like within two week period. He said he went to one woman and he said, I'm so sorry to hear about the baby. She said, Preacher, I don't know. Why would God do this? I try to go to church, try to do right. God took my baby. I don't I don't know if I'm even coming back to church or not. I'm just, this ain't right. This the way why did God do this to me? And he prayed with her and left. Went and visited the other lady. He was dreading it. Walked in there and sat down and said, Ma'am, I'm sure sorry to hear about your baby. She said, Oh, preacher, don't be. She said, When I got to thinking about it, I thought my baby will never have to see the wickedness of this old world. My baby will never have to be tempted and fall into sin. My baby will never be sick. It'll never hurt. He's, he's with the Lord and up there with Jesus. She said, God blessed us a lot. By letting us know. See, this depends on two different ways of looking at it. And that's the difference in how you look at your, your mess. You look at it like, poor old me, I didn't deserve this. Or do you look at it like, great big God, He has a plan. And all things work together for good to them that love Him. Right? It's easy for me to stand up here and say that. I ain't, I ain't going to have a pain in my body, my bills are paid. I've got gas in my car. But before I get home this evening, all that will be gone. I've been down. I've been where I didn't have no gas. I've been where I was hurting all over. I've been where I couldn't afford to, to go get something to eat. Three, three kid, little kids. I've been there. I know what it's like to be broke. I know what it's like to have to choose which bill you're going to pay. And let the one, you know, I can't go turn that off, so I'll let that go. Pay, or I'll call them and I'm going to pay half of it. Been there. You know something? It's good for you. It's good for me. I went to a time one time where I cheat, lied, and cheat. And sometimes you look back on stuff like that and you say, God, you're doing this, allowing this for my good. Somebody wrote this. Trust Him when the dark doubt assail thee. Trust Him when your strength is small. Trust Him when it seems to trust Him is the hardest thing of all. Trust Him. He's ever faithful. Trust Him. His will is best. Trust Him. For then, trust Him then, the cloud and sunshine only be a place of rest till the storms of life are over and the 
trusting they are packed. Never forget that little footprint thing, you know, that's all over the country. You see it in stores. You see it in places like like Cracker Barrel or someplace in Gatlinburg or something. And they have this little thing on the wall and say, footprints in the sand. And there's a man walking on the, the beach, you know, and he's walking there. And he said, Lord, there's the worst time in my life. And there's only one set of footprints. Remember that? Brother Willard Thomas wrote that. A friend of mine, they, it always says author unknown. But Brother Willard down in Georgia actually wrote that. He didn't get the credit for it until he got to heaven. He got it now. But, but he, the man says, Lord, I was going through the worst time of my life. Why'd you leave me? And the Lord said, I'd leave you. The reason you see one set of footprints there is because I was carrying it. That's the right way to look at it. Amen. Hallelujah. And I can tell y'all, I didn't just read that in the book. That's happened to me. There's times when I thought I ain't going to make it. This, this ain't, I'll never make it. And I had people, you'll never make it. Dude. <laughs> that really was encouraging. There was a woman one time got me one time. She said, you might as well forget it, son. I said, Thank you very much for that little word of encouragement. And uh, you know what I did? One day turned into a, one hour turned into a day. One day turned into a week. One week turned into a month. One month turned into a year. And all of a sudden you look one day and say, well, I'm doggone. And the Lord said, I carry it. I don't know what you're going through this morning. But Miss Desi's coming. Brandon, come get us phone. Maybe you're here this morning and you're going through the worst time of your life. Don't get on a pity party. Take your burden to the Lord. Leave it here. Let's all stand with our heads bowed, please. Everyone standing. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed this morning. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. God's speaking to your heart this morning. Maybe you're going through a difficult time. Family. Marriage. Work. Health. Whatever it might be, I don't know. I do know this. Just trust me. Trust me. Lord Jesus, I pray a special prayer for that one this morning who has a broken heart in our midst today. I don't know what she's going to move. I don't know what he's up against to face it. But dear Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name. This will be the moment. This will be the act. Give them the victory over this situation, whatever it might be in their life. And we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. Right now, I pray that you touch that one at home, watching on, online, maybe in a big 18-wheeler truck, or maybe in a jail cell, I don't know, or in a hospital room. God, reach out there and help them to know there's a better day ahead. There's a better day coming. I pray you'd help them know that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're here this morning, you need to come. Just slip right out of your seat. Come. Just bring your burden to the Lord and leave it while we say. Hey, everybody, let's go. Jesus, Just keep me You need to come this morning. Be a good time to come. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Bring your burden to the Lord and lay it down like that. That's right. Hey, Amen. Come on. Come on. You don't... You don't never know what somebody might be going through. But I can tell you what the answer is. Amen. Say, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever till my rest. Just give it to the Lord this morning. Beyond the river. Sing it again, brother. Let's sing another verse. The Amen. Say, Lord, I will just get near that cross. Put it on the put it on the altar this morning. Come on, right now. Amen. Amen. She found me. Amen. Hey. There the bright and morning star. That's right. It's Amen. Let's all sing now. Everybody sing. In the
the cross. Thank God for the cross. Woo! Amen. Hallelujah. Be my glory ever till my rapture. Amen. 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 He's playing softly this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The old song says, bring your burden to the Lord and leave it there. I'm so glad, so thankful we can walk in here this morning and hear a message of hope. Hope, brother. Thank God we got hope. Hallelujah. That's worth more than anything in this world. When people lose hope, yeah, you don't get. You ain't got nothing left. You lose hope. Don't lose hope. God's still on His throne. Hey, Amen. He ain't going nowhere. Amen. Hey. Hey, Amen. Thank the Lord. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Hey. All right. Hey. Hey, Amen. All right. Uh, we got a special prayer request this morning to pray for uh, Diane Messer. Uh, they're having some real difficulties. Uh, that's Stacy and Brooke's mother, I think. Right? And we'll remember to pray for her this morning. And uh, a lot of other people that have called or texted and said they're uh, sick, one thing and another. Pray the Lord to get everybody through this January cold snap, whatever it is. That's the good thing about it, if you done got the flu, you got it over with, and you won't have to have it again until next year, maybe. Uh, so uh, uh, let's let's pray for those who are not able to be here. Let's don't forget now tonight at six o'clock. Come praying. I've got something that all of us need. I mean, get to start the new year off right. Then uh, uh, next Sunday night, now all the kids, teenagers, everybody, bring all of your friends next Sunday night. Big youth night. We're gonna have one in January, one in February, one in March. And then youth rally will be in April. So getting getting fired up, ready for youth rally, getting youth rally mode. Amen. All right. Let's we'll, we'll bow our heads and dismiss in prayer. Everybody fellowship there a little bit and before you go and be friendly, be be uh talk to somebody, say hey to them, and uh and God will bless you for it. Okay? Amen. All right. Uh Coach P, dismiss in prayer.